Hi, Kako, everyone. Welcome to episode 38 of the Moana Nui podcast. My name is Moana McAdams, your host, um, author of Fishing Day with Papa Ray from the, the Adventures of Nakoa and Nohea series, editor for the Wild Card Chronicles, publisher for Burning Spear Comics, and champion for all things indigenous and indie. Tonight, I'm so happy to have my my co-host back. Um, you know, after some 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 personal life things that come up, you know, um, and we're happy to have her back and safe. So tonight, I'm joined by Dana. Hello, everyone. I'm Dana at um, Danique Events. For those that may know me or may not know me, I am a cosplay event and staff con photographer. I'm also an event planner and a whole lot more. And now I'm going to hand it back over to my lovely co-host so we can get ready for our wonderful guest that we have for this seven o'clock session. Awesome. All right, you guys, before we bring Ryan on, we have a couple announcements to make. Um, we are in the final hours of the Nightfall Kickstarter, um, which is part of the Moana Nui squad, one of our previous guests who came on. Um, they have an amazing project going on for just, I think it's just a little over a day. Um, they're already fully funded with 205 backers, which is awesome. Um, and they're shooting for a $7,000 mark in the home stretch. So be sure to check out Nightfall on Kickstarter. And then we just want to say a big mahalo nui, a thank you to everyone who pledged the uh, four pages and 16 bars of visual mixtape anthology. Um, our comic book, The Wildcard Chronicles, was featured in the anthology along with a powerhouse roster of indie comics creators. Uh, we successfully raised $7,398 with the help of 130 backers. So once again, mahalo nui to everyone who was a part of that campaign. Um, and then last but not least, the Moana Nui Kickstarter is launching next Monday, March 22nd. Um, there is a battle going on to be the first backer on the project. Uh, and we're offering a mystery bag bonus valued at over $100 to the person who secures the first spot. So be sure to hit the preview link um, at moananuipodcast.com and you can see it scrolling down there below. Um, be sure to check that out. Hit the notification button um, and get ready for your chance to hit that bonus mystery bag. All righty. So with that said, I am so excited to bring on our guest tonight. His name is Ryan Robinson. Um, Ryan discovered his talent at an early age and his enthusiasm for art emerged from his interest in pop culture icons. Based out of Columbus, Ohio, Ryan Robinson is a freelance artist offering versatile services, including portraits, illustrations, graphic novel illustration, and his personal favorite comic book illustrations. He holds a Bachelor of Fine Arts with a concentration in illustration from the Columbus College of Art and Design. Through his art, Ryan continues to enhance concepts and ideas by providing visual representation that adds personality and character to all that he creates. And with that said, we are happy to have him on with us. Hey, Ryan. Hey, what's up, y'all? Yes, go clap, go clap. Hey. <laughs> what's up? 
I'm super stoked to be here. I'm really excited. Yes, we're excited to have you here. Um, so this is Ryan's like first official podcast in like individual interviews. So we're yeah. excited to have him here and you know make the Moana Nui podcast be his his jump off. So yeah. um thank you so much for your time and um sharing us, you know, sharing with us the talents um that you have. We're we're really excited to get to know you just a little bit more. Um, I'm super excited. I cannot yeah. wait. <laughs> I've never been I've never been on this like side before doing an interview. Like um shout out to Mike Watson. Um shout out to him. I've been on a couple of his streams. We're doing like Agents of Nerdy and um, just doing fun stuff with him, doing reviews about movies and stuff like that. But I've never been on this kind of like side of the corner, you know, and I did some streaming for like a short period of time, but life happened. Things got in the way, but I've never done anything like this before. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, Ryan and I uh, met through Mike on the uh, Lovecraft Country panel, which we Hi. had <laughs> such a fun time talking yeah. about the TV show. Um, we love that that so much. And uh, we were joined, I think it was um, Jay from Mess Comics and I think mm -hmm. it was Mickey, Mickey, maybe? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, small world and uh, um, you just all of the indie creators, you know, it's just amazing the community that we we build together. Um, so let's get started. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where did you grow up and how did you um, how did your love for art and illustration begin? Sure. Um, it, it goes back to like when I was really, really young. Um, I just kind of like I think for me, it all fell into place uh, when I was about, um, I would say about three. Um, my mom took me to see uh, Snow White. It was like the first animated film I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yes. you know, when I saw Snow White, I was like, whoa, that it, like, it impacted me in such a different way. And then my mom continuously introduced me uh, to other things like Land Before Time. That was like my jam for yeah. like- Ducky! Since, uh, yeah, Ducky, <laughs> Littlefoot, Sarah, from like a young age, from four to five. And I really kind of fell in love with cartoons and animation, you know, and really, really hardcore in animation. Like I just started watching a bunch of animated movies. It went from that to Lady and the Tramp, to Bambi, to the Aristocats. And I just fell in love with animation. Animation was to me like the ultimate art, you know? And then around like three or four, I started drawing like figures. I started drawing like turtles and stuff and started really off with like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's what me and Mike really have in common. That's like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like turtles was like my thing for the longest time. And then I got really like serious around, um, seven when the movie came out and all that stuff and just started drawing ever since. But then like what really influenced me with art um, was when I was around middle school, my middle school teacher really kind of honed in on me and my craft um, started like really showing me like different artists, you know, impressionist artists, you know, Renaissance artists, things of that nature. And I really got into the side of like painting. So painting became like the new obsession at that point. So I started dabbling and painting slowly and getting around all of that. And then I started really taking it seriously uh, when I did my uh, show for the first time in like school and I won best of show. And I was like, well, I think I found something. Need to start honing in on that. And my ultimate goal was to become an animator. Um, and then I went to uh, Art Institute of Pittsburgh and I just didn't like it. You know, and then I got sick. So I had to come back because I got sick when I was a, a senior in high school. I got meningitis and it really affected my adult life from now to then. So um, I really didn't uh, kind of hinder me. I got really sick really bad. So I had to leave the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. But I finished at Columbus College of Art and Design. So but in that period of time, I was really, really sick. Um, I was on dialysis and stuff. So I finished and I didn't do art for a long time, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> so I took a break for about, uh, I think seven years. Um, and then 
started getting back into it. Like I didn't really do a lot of art um, at the period of when I was sick. Um, when I was out of school, I didn't do anything with my degree. I didn't do anything to push myself into a direction where I needed to be with my career, you know? And I think that's the, like my biggest loss in this kind of concept is like not knowing the jump off of where you can go in your career. Um, and I think that's where I was unsuccessful because I was in a period of just not being Ryan, you know? So um, these past few years, I started picking up art again um, and really honing in around 2016 where, you know, the digitalness started to happen and really hone in to how digital art is kind of like what I hate about it is like there's a love and hate relationship in the art world with digital art. Most people don't understand it. Most people don't think it's art at all, but I will 100% tell you that is not the case whatsoever. It is art, nothing less. You're just, you know, limited to one function, which is a pen. So you're not using brushes, but it's the same concept, same role, same direction, you know, doing everything from the building of what you're going to do to where it's going to finish. So. Um, I really got back into art, especially this past year due to the COVID pandemic. Um, I've been focusing a lot on the craft of how I want to get myself in this digital realm. And being a digital artist at this point, finding your uniqueness, finding your style, because there's so much digital art out there. Um, everybody has a unique style and i was my point of going from 2016 to now it's evolved into where i want it to go and see where it's going to go so i'm really looking forward to you know continuing learning it's been such an experience at this point where i continue to learn almost every day when i pick up my pen and get into my application and just start putting down what I'm going to put down on that day. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, there was a comment on one of your recent pieces that said, uh, eyes as the windows to the soul. Mm -hmm. You do a fantastic job of capturing the essence of your subjects in the portraits you create. And I love watching your time-lapse videos through the different phases. Tell us a little bit about your process. How do you select the characters for your project and the pop culture icon illustrations mm -hmm. that really bring out that essence of each person? Sure. Um, with the beginning of my like digital art, um, I wanted to see how quick I could draw, to be honest, in <laughs> digital art. Because like, it could be really a kind of a strenuous thing, trying to find the correct brushes that you want to use. you know. And, and for me, it's just like what you want to take with that. So at first, it was about the quickness of how you can do it. And when you look at my early stuff, um, in my opinion, it's, it's just decent. It's not like mm. show-stopping or like you know like i have like an evolution if you go to my website there is like early work and then there's a lot of recent work and you can tell the difference of like how it is a, it was a struggle to find my my spot my niche you know mm -hmm. so my process i start out with is now i put a layer of color down you know mm -hmm. if i'm going to use a warm color or a cool color it's um, it's 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 a flat like gesso. Like when you start a painting out, like anything else, you strike gesso down and then you put your color down. It's the same process. I just put my color down, and then I use a, a brush called an render pencil. Um, it's most of what I use. I don't use like an HB pencil, a six P, a six P. It's a render pencil. So when I sketch, it's light enough but dark enough where you can see it. 
most of my drawings, you still see my line work. I don't erase any of my line work. It's in there. If you look really close to my work, the line work is all there from the Narendra pencil, from sketching a face to sketching a comic book character to sketching anything, the line work stays. I don't ever get rid of it because it's like my thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you should delete your process and erase your process when it comes to that, you know? This was done with this Black Panther piece that I did. Um, I did this last year, right of <laughs> when Chadwick passed. This is all done in ink. Um, it's not even a pencil, it's ink, straight ink with just lines. Um, and that's that. And then I did, there's an old comic book picture from my Stan Lee picture. Um, I just cropped out the Black Panther and then overlaid it um, to do that, um, to make this piece. Um, Cause there's a drawing that I have a Stan Lee tribute that has my Black Panther in it as well. Um, so, with my process, I just continue going. Now, when it comes to paintings, um, it's a different thing, but with sketches or anything that I'm just using a pencil with, I, it's the same process. It's all lines. And I don't even remotely have, uh, a, it's, just, it's just quick, you know? And my process is really fast when I'm putting down lines. I'm a big crosshatch fan. If anybody knows me, I crosshatch almost everything in my work. You will never see a clear-cut line or a clear-cut face. There is just me just drawing lines, <laughs> nothing more. But when it comes to painting, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that. I mean, that's very fascinating. Now, um, with comic illustrations being one of your favorites, have mm -hmm. you worked with any comic series? And if so, um, which ones? No, and never, where can I've, we find them? Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, that's I've all right. Never worked in a professional comic book environment ever. Um, I did write my own comic book um, okay. back in 2018. Um, I was doing it with a group of friends um, at the time, and we all got together and decided to, to start doing stories, creating comic books. Started off small. We went old school, traditional, you know, got your comic press paper, you know, do your line work and your panels and stuff. And we started that out. And then I moved on to a short story that I wrote with uh, my friends, um, and it was called Taryn. You know, she was a young girl. Um, she was about 16 years old, you know, she had two fathers, um, and it was just a reflection of where I would like to see my life go in the future. Um, but she, uh, there was an alien invasion and alien bonded with her. She was a host. Um, and then an epidemic happened. There's a villain, of course, and he spread this virus and only she can stop that. So it was like a short story that turned into a book one story that I created in 2018. And I started that, but then, you know, I'm not a creative writer, can't write dialogue really well, not good at all of that. You know, I'm good at having this wonderful idea. You know, it's just not something I can express through writing. So when I began that process, I'm like, well, one, I want to get to two because I have this big plan but then it just kind of like didn't work out because I don't have a creative writer. If I had a creative writer and we could collaborate, it would have been a whole thing that I would just continue to do, you know, but I've never worked with a comic book company professionally. Um, it would be one of the best things if I've ever done that. Um, I know that I do a lot of fan art. Um, fan art is a big thing of mine. I love drawing heroes. I love drawing villains. Um, but it would be so cool to do a story or somebody else's story and do their art for them, you know, or do their panels for them or do even cover art. It's always been something that I wanted to do. But then there's that other side of me where I just like to sit down and just paint. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that other side of me where I find my therapy in 
my paintings, you know, um, cause I do, I, my, I do come from this strenuous fine art background and this traditional background. I just find that, you know, I could put a piece of me in any of my pieces. Like with yeah. comic books, you can't really put a piece of you in that. You can, if you're creating your own love, compassion, and heart into your work, mm -hmm. that's where your piece lies. That's where your soul is, you mm -hmm. know? But when it comes to me, I get more appreciation when I'm when I'm painting something or someone or something, you know, mm -hmm. at that point. That's awesome. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that you're going to be the cover artist for Mike and I's um, <laughs> special <laughs> project. <laughs> down. Oh, down. <laughs> oh. Ah, variant cover. This is going to be amazing. I can already see it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, no, this is good. You know, like uh, knowing that you would love to work with a creative writer and collaborate. So, yes. Um, you know, Dana and I were always looking for opportunities to connect people within our community. So we'll definitely mm -hmm. keep that in mind for you. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you, if you read it, <laughs> I mean, it's there. It's like mm -hmm. you have one, two, three act kind of thing. But like when you're looking at the dialogue, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Cause it's like me talking through these people and I can't. I just can't know. It needs to be more enthusiastic, yeah. a little bit more popping, and I don't have that <laughs> that talent. You know, that is yeah. a true talent. Creative writing mm -hmm. is a true talent. You know, I have yeah. ideas. I just don't have that kind of that kind. Yeah, it's a true talent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I've seen that in some comics. Like you can tell that um, the writer is still learning and then because most of the book itself is like focused on the images right like i mean and images are really important in comics right let's not get that wrong but um there are some stories where like there's no words yeah you <laughs> like need, you need it's almost as important as doing anything it's yeah doing yeah. work inking work it's it's the same thing you need all of it yeah that, that soup you can't have just potatoes and water you need <laughs> some seasoning, oh, some spices. Yes, seasoning. Yes. seasoning. <laughs> you put yes. some stank on it. Yes. <laughs> well, mm. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, with your freelance work, you tell us about your favorite projects you work on. Uh, tell us about your favorite projects you worked on, and where can we find? Uh, some of your work? Well, most of my work is through Instagram or on my website. Um, I don't see I'm navigating there. There's an aspect that Ryan does not know anything about. And I'm going to be a hundred percent. Okay. There is a business side to selling yourself. Yeah. Okay? Selling yourself is something that Ryan was never focused on her. I'm talking in like third person because <laughs> never focused on that. Yeah. You know? And now I'm learning that side as I go. You know, I'm okay. really honing in on the business aspect of myself and branding myself. You know, you need to carry your brand to know your brand and what you want to do and what your outlet's going to be. You know, I think for my freelance art, you know, it's all been what I want to do not for mm -hmm. what others want to do. It's what I want to do. It's never been about me wanting to, you know, put myself out there because there's a fear. I've always had this fear, um, this underlining fear that, you know, <laughs> you're just all right. You're not good. You're just okay. Just, you know, go with your flow, stay in your lane kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I'm trying to get out of that mindset because I feel like at a time where I have most of my time now, where a lot of people have a lot of time, you start to reflect on missed opportunities. You know, there's a lot of missed opportunity that in my own personal life that I've missed. You know, I really took a break from art for a long time, you know, not really honing in on my craft when I should have been honing on my craft you know, and really trying to get myself out there and selling yourself, you know, you got to work hard in the game to get somewhere in the game, you know, right. 
You know, you got to get your points. If you don't get your points, you lose, you know. Mm. And there's a point of time where I felt like I've lost a little bit of that credibility and that learning experience of knowing where you can go in this field, you know. When I started working for, you know, companies and just started like, you know, you're only working for them. You're not working for yourself, you know. And now when I have this time to reflect on that and start really getting back into my art these past three years, you know, knowing that, you know, wow, maybe, just maybe I can do something, you know, mm -hmm. since I've been really focused on what I've been doing lately, just maybe. So I've been doing this kind of thing where I'm just out here monthly picking on what I want to do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like this past March, you know, What's coming out? Oh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Well, well, maybe I just should draw some Jack Snyder. <laughs> like, I'm going to draw the, the Justice League. And I just decided <laughs> to do that. And then last month, of course, was Black History Month. And I didn't even have, I didn't even think about doing that. I'm just like, I'm in the mood to draw and paint Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. And it just, I did it. And it just spawned and kept going. I didn't stop. You know, because I did, the, you know, the, the juices were going, I was on a flow, the water was right, and I was comfortable, and everything kind of just fell into place, and I decided to just do eight, you know, make it a series of eight, you know, and just do that. Do people that influence my life and who are important in my life when I was growing up. These people impacted my life in some shape, way, or form due to their boldness, their fearlessness, their talent, their integrity, everything about these people are part of my life in some shape, way, and form. So I decided to do the people that I love and paint them and put it out there. And then it just sparked and blew into this kind of eruption of just acknowledgement and I have one person say like it's it was a, a beauty to see my art and it was a beauty for her to live to see my art. I was like, I don't even know you. And that yeah. just like, kind of like it kind of like took me back a little bit because I didn't know that these paintings could do that to people, you know, or do those kind of, you know, that kind of influence or these kind of things that would impact. I just do this to, just to do it. You know, the prior month before that, I don't even remember what I was doing, but I was doing something. I think I was drawing the Avengers and I just stopped. <laughs> so, and then I just started getting back into that. The month before that, um, I did like Ruth Bader Ginsburg because she passed. Uh, yeah. you know? mm -hmm. And then I did a Breonna Taylor piece because mm -hmm. I just felt like it, you know? So like it was something... I don't really have like a, a concept or a flow. It's just something that I feel that I want to do, you know? And then like, I didn't, then at the impact of it all is people starting to know, like, you know, where I'm coming from at this point and where my art is. And it's just been really a humble experience at this point. You know, it's been a very humble thing for me. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I think, you know, you mentioned um, that you have that voice, right? That's that's saying like, ah, you're just okay, right? And then you have those people that you mentioned right. that are like really touched by your art, right? So um, I definitely would encourage you to share it more and put yourself out there. Um, you know, I, we all have those, uh, that imposter voice, imposter syndrome, you know, within our heads and, um, the you know the more you can push push past that i mean that's i think that's part of being the greatness of being a creator is is the ability to be brave and to put yourself out there despite what anyone might think right, right. and just to believe truly in like what drives you as a creative you know a painter uh you know whatever the, the case may be but just being true to the voice that is within you, it will, it's, it's a funny thing. It often touches the strangers more than the people within your right. circles, right? Like, yeah, that's the shocking thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have no, like, like 
I don't even and like you're impacted by this stuff. And then people started buying it. Mm-hmm. Like I had a woman like buy my James Baldwin piece, and like it was just like I'm like I'm selling art now. It's just like they just bought my James Baldwin piece. And I'm just like this is this is crazy. Like to the point like and then it's like you know should I continue this this pattern continue like but then I'm like I just want to do more stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? Continue to do different stuff and show different things, you know, and it's just at this point in time where I want to go. But like, I think I'm just going to continue doing different stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's good. I think that's how you find your niche and it's okay. Like, I don't feel like you should even box yourself in. Right. Like, (laughs) Like whatever is, is drawing you at that point. Like, I feel like that's, that's what you should listen to because others are probably seeking the same thing and to see it so beautifully represented in your work. It's amazing. Yes. Mike, thank you. Like, this is where my head is. Like you need to get a gallery set up for your yeah. work. Like I want to be your agent because your, your <laughs> stuff is like amazing. I can totally see this in a fine art gallery, you know, um, we, we gonna have to do some brainstorming and figure out how we, <laughs> how we can do this. Like I, I'm, our, I'm kind of envisioning like, um, you know, the piece that you're going to do for us, like I want to put up in my office at work because I have all this cool art from, you know, like all the people that I know oh, and you know, yeah. our own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I got and you. like people ask me all yeah. the time, they're like, where'd you get that? You know, like, and so I'm just like, yep, mm-hmm, this is how it works. <laughs> I got this like cool idea. It was kind of like, I had this idea of doing like fire and ice. Yes. Like, like but then I'm like, I know what she likes and I know what she does. <laughs> when I, like, I'm going to do something. I'm not even going to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But these people are, you know, you got Cicely Tyson, you got the mother, Marsha P. Johnson. These people reflect pieces of my life, you know, in a way like Marsha P. Johnson, you know, is the mother of the Stonewall riots in 1969. She's mm. mostly forgotten. You know, she's the one who fought for gay rights in every step of the way. James Baldwin was also gay. And he was also one of the best people to represent our culture and in our world. Um, Cicely Tyson, his mama for everyone, you know. Nina Simone, you know, black culture of influence beyond everyone's years. Of course, mm-hmm. number 44. <laughs> Yes. Forever. And Prince is uh my daddy. So <laughs> <laughs> he's he's my father. Like he's, yes. a, he's such a big influence in my life. Um, it's not even funny. So mm-hmm. like these people are a reflection of who I am um personally, you know, mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. But like I choose color to be the guide, you know, most representation of seeing influential characters um, such as President Barack Obama, he's painted in bright colors and mm. like really, you know, presidential colors. You know, I wanted to ground him and make him real, so I decided to paint him with dark colors. You know, give him an influence to shine to make him feel like he's really looking at you for you as an American. You know. And that's 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 what I wanted to represent in this painting mm-hmm. is that he's looking at you as an American and not, you know, the president because the president is right. a different thing. I wanted to ground him and make him look at you like you're looking at him mm-hmm. right now. You know, Prince was a reflection. I did a pop art kind of thing. Prince was like pop art. What's pop art? A lot of representation. I looked at Basquiat, Andy Warhol. I'm like, let's mesh them up and just get crazy <laughs> with it. So that's that's what I did. You know, I made him, of course, purple because you know he's the purple. Yes, purple. That's right. It's his color. Shout out to JD who says that the Prince uh, rendering might be his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you not love Prince? Yes. And I think we got one more. Yeah, it's Billy Holiday. That was done in oil paints. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah, Billy Holiday is uh, like 
that's that's my jam. She's my jam. <laughs> you know, strange fruit for life. Yes. Yes. Like so much talent. Exactly. All righty. Let's see. Okay, so, um, you know, currently the nerd community is abuzz with the release of the, the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And you oh. just created a fantastic series of pieces for each of those characters. Um, let's kind of share some of that because I, you know, I, I was loving it. Um, <laughs> I haven't watched yet. Like, you. I know folks were like, I'm all, all into it. I put myself on a deadline. I'll never do that again. <laughs> I'll never do that again. Let me trust and believe I will not do that again. <laughs> no, but this comes back to comic book art. You know, like my illustrations are all line work, um, straight up line work. Of course, like I would take like three different references of these characters. Um, ones I would look at faces of like Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, you know, Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, and really hone in on drawing their faces correctly. You know, mm -hmm. Gal Gadot is not the easiest face to draw. I'm going to be 100%. You know, that took a while. You know, and then really put it in a format of my comic book style, but used their reference as well. Um, and most of these references are mashed up. You know, they're not the same reference that you would see. Um, so I would like either put it on the mat, just look back and forth or look at my phone and look back and forth, <laughs> you know, very, very, a lot of head movement was going on in these paintings. Um, yeah. But I wanted to correlate uh, with a bunch of color, like Zack Snyder, we will always say like people still find his movies grim and dark and uh, color palettes are dull. So I decided to say, 1984 just came out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna boost that 1984 colors and put it in the Zack Snyder Justice League. So I chose these red streaks going out and all these paintings to represent dark sides of mega beams. Mm. That's why you see all these flashes of red going through the paintings. Um, and then I chose to have, it progressively goes from dark to light. Like if you look at the Superman piece and the Batman piece, they're more darker than the other ones. Like way more darker than the other ones. Like the background's more dark, man. And you progressively go into Wonder Woman and you go into Aquaman and then you go into Flash and so they get progressively brighter throughout. Mm -hmm. Like much more brighter and then really bright towards the end. So um, I decided to go that route uh, majorities are done in watercolor and oil um, and just sketches. They're just straight up sketches. Um, they're not even like crisp sketches. They're not crisp at all. They're just <laughs> sketches. Um, and I decided to paint them. Um, and they were really, really fun. But I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> um, because I'm going to tell you right now, Cyborg. A lot of intricate like stuff. Like he's not, he doesn't have a broad shell. Um, and like you know, Jason Momoa's costume was too much. You know, going in, like you could see where I'm like, I'm not even adding that. I'm just gonna paint some <laughs> over it, you know, because I'm just like, I just got too much at a time. Um, I, but I really enjoyed the process, you know, of keeping a continuous theme. Um, and also a continuous color palette. You know, mm -hmm. I use the majority of the same colors throughout the, all the pieces. Um, and most of my focus is having these faces look like the actors themselves. You know, not having to be dead on with the faces, but look like who they are individually. Mm -hmm. I would say you did a good job there. <laughs> yes. I I definitely agree. <laughs> it's like he's even got the scar in the eyebrow, and, you know, mm -hmm. the details yeah, are. Most of, these, most of these paintings are, you know, oil paint, watercolor paint, acrylic paint. You know, there's some spray paint in there as well. 
you know, like these are all done in Procreate, which is an app I use continuously. Um, there's just so much you can do with this app, um, building layers upon layers. You know, Watt knows, he knows the jam. So like, I think for me, it's just like from building these kind of, you know, layers upon layers and showing, you know, the process is what I enjoy most. You know, you can make these pop, you don't have to make them pop, but like I have, you know, a love for digital art now where I just want to continually push myself of where I can go. The goal is ultimately I want to be, I don't want to be photo real because photo real is, you know, a talent of its own, but yeah. like I want to get to a point where, you know, where you see my piece, you know, it's mine. Right. Mm. Yep. Put your stamp on it. <laughs> yeah. Put the seasoning on it. <laughs> Bring the flavor. Yeah. So um, which was your favorite to create out of this series? I really had a fun time with The Flash. Okay. Um, the Flash was something like you would tell, like I, I didn't put any kind of like, I think what brought it together is when I start adding the, like the electricity because it just got, yeah. got fun, like, and it got fun. Most like I think most people's favorite right now is Cyborg because mm -hmm. I think he has the much the most detail in his like shell. Um, but Ezra Miller like for me was fun, um, and I think the reference that I use I kind of like I took my own like spin on his face. Like <laughs> in this picture, his eyes are closed. Yeah, my eyes are not. Um, I had really fun with it. Like I looked at his eyes and tried to match it as close as possible, but the color was fun with this and having this like dark palette in the back and this like red, this bold red in his costume and the red throughout kind of push the piece and then adding these bright blue electricity streaks were like, I think that's my favorite one, you know? And my second favorite one is Wonder Woman because I'm really proud of Gal Gadot's face. Like yeah. she's not the easiest to draw. I'm not even gonna front. Um, her face is really, really difficult because she's really slender, and it's kind of she. Her face yeah. is extended long. It's not mm -hmm. like against her square. It's long, <laughs> like it's straight up long. So like doing this like side look, it was. It took a minute. But then I got there. I had to take a couple of days. I had to take a break on it because it was just, it wasn't flowing with me. But then I took a break and I got there. But then, um, but drawing uh, Jason Momoa was probably the funnest. You know, he was the funnest one to draw um, and paint because he's Aquaman. And my goal was to make the background look like the Northern Lights. Yes. Yes. Water. So that was my goal to make the background look like the Northern Lights. So I kind of continued that process because I started with the Wonder Woman to make it. Then I, and I really was going to push it with Aquaman. I already had this idea. Mm -hmm. So I made the background look like the Northern Lights and kind of made it look like he was out in, in his element. You know, yes. that was like the funnest one to paint and draw, in my opinion. Yes. And the most difficult one was probably, I'm not even going to front. It was cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, yeah, I just did this for me. I did it because, you know, I love Zack Snyder's work. You know, I love what he's done with the DC. Uh, he, DC was like something that he did for himself. It was a representation of how he wanted the DC universe to look. Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like you had your Marvel, which is like light and tone. And there's some serious elements, but not as serious as, you know, mm -hmm. DC. And it's more kind of dark and yep. mythic and, you know, very mythic. Mm -hmm. the gods amongst men, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about his work. Like, I just rewatched Man of Steel and yes. that oh, man. Yes. last night. I'm just looking and I'm like, he really had something here. And it just, it makes me sad that nobody really paid attention to what he was actually doing. Like looking at the beginning of Man of Steel and how Krypton looked. Oh my God, I loved Krypton that. Had, 
its own atmosphere, its language, its own uniqueness, its own tone, you know, you know, that's stuff that people need to look at. Like Mm -hmm. he's, he's an artist, you know? So I just think for me, like I wanted to do this for me and also be excited for like the Justice League coming out because I'm a nerd, you know? (laughs) You know, I did this for my own fun, but then I also did it like, you know, fan art, fan art. Yes, that's right. I think for me, that's what it was for me. But like, I think now that, you know, I have, I'm just going to keep pushing myself. Absolutely. Yeah, so Dennis asked if you were excited about the Snyder Cut. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, that's dope, you know? I painted six people before the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you did. Know, like, painted six people, and I was yes. like, I'm going to have this all done by March 18th. <laughs> you did it. Yes. Yeah. And Mike yeah. Watson said he needs Wanda ASAP. Wanda Scarlet Witch? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I... um. With like, I was like when I was doing the Avengers, like I was sketching the Avengers. Me and Mike were talking about this, like when I was doing Avengers back in what's before February, January. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I was drawing the Avengers and doing my like own version of the Avengers, like comic book style. Um, But then like Wanda Vision happened. Like I think I'm gonna do like a white Vision and like. Wanda together, yeah. something like that. Yeah, that's um, what he wants. <laughs> yeah. And after like looking at her costume, Andy Park is a god amongst mere mortals. If anybody doesn't know who Andy Park is, he is the head <laughs> visual designer of Marvel Studio. <laughs> He's the one who designed the costume of WandaVision. So um, that 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 that's the best costume of the MCU, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and, and Alyssa was saying that your art is amazing. If you do commissions, she would love to commission you. Yeah, and I do. I do do commissions. Um, like, like we already got something going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, um, like I said, branding, like learning this aspect of my art and branding myself, and start setting up stores and things of that nature, um, I'm learning. Um, Everything through commission right now is just through messaging me or uh, direct messaging me or messaging me on Instagram or through Facebook or through my email right now currently. Um, But, but, (laughs) I'm setting up a store here soon. Um, I'm also going to set up a Discord and set up an EFT account as well. So Nice. That's what's up, y'all. You got to get your commissions in because he's about to get <laughs> popping. <Yes. laughs> get in there while you can. <laughs> yes. And I think, Ryan, I think we talked about this, right? Are we still cool with, like, having a couple commission spots on the Kickstarter? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See y'all. Of course, from March 22nd. <laughs> we got to get you get you going, get you going. Oh, look, you got you got one. Dennis G is said, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So jump on that on day one. Get that spot before they're taken. That's right. Look, look at Mike. Mike's like, I got one, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better yeah. be on it as soon as it launches. Don't sleep on day one. Don't sleep on day one. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, I I can see a lot of potential for your art, especially because you do such a variety. It's not just superheroes. You do portraits like, man, um, you know, whenever things get better, shoot, I don't, I mean, you know how they have those artists that that set up at like whether it be amusement parks or like events. You know, well, I got I'm, I got pretty lucky. There's a couple people um, when the Black Icon series went off and blew up. Um, I know that uh, one of the buyers who bought my work want me to do a gallery for the United St- uh, Columbus United States Treasury in the Treasury Building. See. Um, and there's another one uh, who reached out to me for the historical society. Um, but I definitely want to like just keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love it would be nothing but the world to have a gallery and 
and just have that and, you know, enjoy that. You know, this is when, like, you know, I started, like, finding both these are done in watercolor and graphite, you know. And, you know, and it's just something that I enjoy. I love drawing people. I think that's what I love most. Like, I really got heavily into figure drawing um, more than anything and portraits in my life. You know, and there's all different kinds of portrait artists out there, you know, all out there. You know, there's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Grogu in the house. That's the boy. You know it. That's the boy. <laughs> You know, so, um, and really just enjoying it. But I think for me, it's more about finding my craft with digital, mm -hmm. you know, and finding my own unique style. You know, like I said prior before, there are a lot of artists out there who have, you know, their style, traditional art. And it's, it's took me, it's taken, that's not even a word, taken me <laughs> um, a couple years to actually find it, you know? and really find what I'm good at in regards to digital art, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really want to like push myself to the next level, you know, and I want to level up. I don't want to be stuck in this like gestation spot, you know, just sitting there simmering, you know, I want to mm -hmm. level up and really like brand myself um, to get myself out there and really like, you know, like I never had the opportunity, like I've never been to a con, you know, or indie con or comic book con. Um, I've never really like sold myself out there to like push myself to show my work, you know? And like, I've never felt this kind of like, this push to do that, but now I have that push to yeah. do that, you know? Mm -hmm. and I really want to do that. Like for instance, like when the Mandalorian came out, I was just on this kick of just drawing Mandalorian. Like I did, a, <laughs> like I did a sauna, I did uh, 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 Mandalorian and Grogu and all that stuff. So I did three pieces of that, you know, and there she is, boom. <laughs> and then I did a commission piece of this Muhammad Ali. You know, this is when I was first learning, like you know, dropping color for like a portrait. Um, and really, and I decided to stay in a one tone kind of thing, you know, because for me, Muhammad Ali is a bad, mother, but he was also humble, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I tried to show like fire, this orange reference, but blue throughout these cool colors to represent like he's humble as well. So, like, I think for me, color is like my thing. Absolutely. You do it well. Yeah, <laughs> do it well. So, like, that's my thing. And I try to kind of, like, do these colors that don't really go together, but I'm going to make it work kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, color's my thing. Yeah, so Mike is saying, if you don't talk to me or ask me questions mm -hmm. about branding, it's going to be a problem. So, He's uh, coming for you. He's coming for you. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think uh, we need to have a tag team with me and Mike and talk to you and help you out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My next thing is trying to, like, really get on this branding thing because branding is something that I do need to push myself for because I think for me looking at stuff, like, I'm like, I'm a little different. From a lot of artists out there, just a little, That's good. Bit, a little yes. bit, a little That's bit, a little bit. Thing. So we got a question from Brad Arnie: Is art your full time job or something you do for simple enjoyment? Um, if I had it my way, it would be my full time job, right. you know. But life doesn't work like that, you know. I'm a, I have a kidney transplant. My health is like always number one. Uh, you know, yeah. I've been through. A bunch of stuff, you know. I think for me, I need to have health care. I have to have all this stuff. I can't pay for my pills. My pills cost a lot of money. To yeah. Keep going yeah. And living. So no, my day job, I do have a nine to five, um, and I do have a day job. But if I had it my way, I would love to have it as a career. Like I said, it would be my my biggest achievement. I could, if I had anything, I would love to be a concept artist. You know. I love drawing mm. monsters. I love drawing horror. As you see in my portfolio on my website, 
there's a lot of scary stuff on there. Like a lot. Like the like for Inktober, I do a lot of horror stuff. Like Mike can contest, he doesn't even look at my work because it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> so there's we'll about to look at it. Horror icons I did for 2019. It was a theme of like that's the mum and there was a thing. So I did like old monsters, cartoon monsters, and then eighty monsters, like eighties from like people we grew up on. So that's the mm -hmm. mom, and then you have Reagan from the Exorcist. So like you know, I do some scary stuff. I like drawing monsters and stuff. So I would love to be like a concept artist and create monsters and you know, like Michael Myers. You know, there's a theme throughout <laughs> all my stuff. You know, but with the first. Inktober I did, it was a concentration on cartoon characters like that's um, from Pan's Labyrinth. That's the, uh, forget his, uh, the, his, uh, the Pale Man. So mm -hmm. Pan's Labyrinth is one of my favorite horror films, but it's, yes. it's, a, it's a love film. You know, it's beautiful. And then you have Nosferatu and then like, it gets more comical and character-like and more illustration-like, you know. So it, it's fun, you know, and if you go to my latest Inktober, see like classic monsters like Frank. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets crazy. There's, I think, Maleficent in there, Beetlejuice, the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. Uh, but then the last one I did, uh, Inktober for 2020, was Urban Legends, where they get a little bit more scarier. Yeah. So if you go to like Inktober for 2020, like there, you have, you know, <laughs> some scary stuff. You like you have, little, you have the little Red Riding Hood um, right there. Forget what monster that is, but he's an urban legend. Um, <laughs> you scroll down, like most of it's kept in the dark because I like having monsters dark, scary. Yeah. Slender Man, and then you have Annabelle, who's just originally a Raggedy Ann doll. Oh my Not god. The, and the conjuring, it's a Raggedy Ann doll. So I put a demon with a Raggedy Ann doll. So, um, that one's creepy. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Right. Right. like, I love drawing these monsters and I really have a lot of fun with it. And these are sketches, you know, with, I like just drops of paint, you know. Like, paint, the you know. Man, if you go into the Slender Man, there's faces behind there, like the children that he's killed. Like, there's faces behind there. You, there's like, I, I get crazy with it. <laughs> like, oh, keep going, man. Keep going, girl. Keep going. <laughs> there's an Asian urban legend called the Tick Tick, a uh, half woman cut in half who goes around cutting, killing people with a steak knife, you know? And then you have the, um, like, it's just her jaws all messed up, you know? I get crazy with it. <laughs> this wolf is dope. Like, yeah. Wow. yeah, that's like that's comic book influence right there. Um, I think that's the Roanoke Wolf. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Mary, the living vampire, and that's the Baba Yaga, the urban legend of the Baba Yaga. Yeah, so I like, I mean, I enjoy like creating my own concepts of thing and doing my own stuff, you know? And if I had any dream job that I would love to do, it would be a concept artist, you know? Yeah. So, but, you know, I think for me, like I do enjoy doing art as an experience for me. It's my therapy. You know, it's honestly where I find most of my solace, most of my peace, mm -hmm. I'm drawing, or painting something um, most of the time. So, so Alyssa had a question. Um, what is considered a scary monster in your opinion? The one you see or the one you don't see, but you know it's there tormenting you? Mm, I think for me, it's the one you don't see. Mm. Um, and, and everything, like monsters are human beings in a way. You know, we live in a mm -hmm. world where there's a lot of there's a lot of hate right now. 
Yes. You know, especially just seeing news today that, you know, an Asian woman was attacked, you know, right. though, she, though she fought him off. That, <laughs> that's hate, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hate going on. We just had eight people just die from a mass- and massage parlor is with a white man going around killing people because he was having a bad day. Right. You know? Those excuses that he's a sex addict. I, I mean, like, this is hate crimes happening yes. every day. Yes. You know, I think for me, like, monsters are among us. They're, they're not ghosts and goblins of fictional characters. I mean, we are the monsters if you want to get down to it. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for me, it's the ones you don't see, like the ones we see in the news every yep. day. So, yeah. yep. And that's what made Lovecraft Country so uh, so great because yes. yes, you know, like it flipped Cthulhu on its head, right? Like, yeah, you know, I think people need to understand and open their eyes and really start understanding people for who they are, um, mm-hmm. as people. You know, not everybody has the best life, and you got to learn from people. You know, you got to learn from people. And I don't think that's we don't do that enough. We don't yeah. really do that enough. You know. It's more judgment than learning. Exactly. And that's why we got this here podcast. That's exactly. right. <laughs> right. Uh, and then one more question from Brad Arney. Do you have prints for sale? All the time. All the time. Every day. Every, Every day. day, all day. Direct <laughs> message, email. Um, it's on my website. It's on my Instagram. It's on my Facebook. You can direct message me at any time um, if you want anything. Yep. All the time. (laughs) Yeah. And we're going to have perhaps some specials on on the campaign. We're going to talk about that. We'll see. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Now, I know, Moana, we have something special to announce. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't think we mentioned it earlier, but so Ryan is actually doing a special piece for us for the Moana Nui podcast. And um, I'll have to ask him, you know, like when he's going to start and when it's going to be available, but we are going to be offering it as part of the campaign. Yes. And so we're I'm really excited because clearly I am a fan of his work um, and he just does such a great job of creating a realistic likeness that you know kind of treads that line of you know like you said photorealistic and yeah it treads you know, the line like yeah. it's not completely photorealistic like <laughs> that, you know, I, I think it's, it's the sweet spot mm-hmm. sweet spot mm-hmm. yeah. yeah definitely yeah I have a really cool concept a really good idea um it's going to be Moana and Dana um but um, I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I have <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise, but it's, I have a really cool idea. Um, the fall in line of what Moana Podcast is. So I have a nice. really cool idea. Awesome. Yeah. All righty. Well, um, so if folks want to follow you and check you out, where should they go? Um, they can find me on Facebook under Ryan Robinson. Um, you can find me on Instagram at r squared 248 um, or you can find me on my website at www.theartsofryanrobinson.com. Got it. And I will put that up on the comments. Alrighty. Okay. So, um, thank you so much for, for being here with us and for sharing, you know, just a sneak peek of, of the beautiful talent that you have. Um, and we're really looking excited. I'm really looking excited, really looking forward to, um, you know, your growth and, and seeing where you take your art uh, in the future. <laughs> Hotline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's the cue. It's time to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's podcast. Be sure to check us out um, at moananuipodcast.com. You can also see that in the scrolling below. We have our Kickstarter campaign that is going to feature a lot of amazing art and um, contributions from the different guests that we've had on the show. It is launching on Monday, March 22nd. So be sure to check out that. 
as well, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, the Moana Nui podcast on YouTube. Um, and then we're also on Twitch too. So um, we look forward to, you know, seeing you guys and connecting with everybody more and helping bring these stories to each of you to help uplift the voices within our communities. Dana, anything else before we close out? Uh, once again, uh, go to Moana Nui podcast.com click on that button so you can get notified as soon as the kickstarter launches so you can have a chance to get as we mentioned before one of those slots to get one of his pieces along <laughs> with some other things from some of our other guests so don't let those opportunities slip you away because uh I'll check it out later, and then all of a sudden, all the slots are gone. Don't don't hit me and Moana up saying, "Can you add some more slots?" <laughs> no, don't do that. You gotta jump on it. Sit that, hit that, hit that little reminder button. Hit the reminder button. But other than that, please follow Ryan on his social media so you yes. can kind of see any of his works that he releases and any new things that are coming down the pike. And then, of course, as he mentioned, you can reach out to him to um, to. I uh, asked for a commission or even order one of his prints. So we'd mm -hmm. like to thank him so much for joining us today for all of you to be wild and amazed by his pieces. And thank you so much. And definitely stay tuned for our next guest that will be coming on at eight 30. Yes. Yes. All righty. Well, once again, thank you, Ryan. Um, and we look forward to having you back again. Um, as the campaign progresses and uh, we can, you know, show some progress work. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much guys. I really, you're welcome. Thank Absolutely. You. Alrighty guys. Take care. Malama Pono. Ahui ho. Thanks.